Yes, welcome. Today we are going to be learning classification of living things. Today we are going to be learning what? Classification of living things. Classification of living things. How living things are grouped from the other living things. That clear? We have human beings. Human beings are living things, isn't it? Plants and animals are also living things. But there are some characteristics or some features in human beings that are different from those of plants and animals. There are some characteristics or features in human beings that are different from that of fish. Fishes are also living things, isn't it? Good is a living thing. But they don't have the same similar features as human beings. So whenever you're classifying human living things, you're trying to group them into similar groups with similar features. You can see that human beings are looking almost like monkeys. Isn't it? They look more like monkeys than they look like goats. They look more like monkeys than they look like snake. You know the animal called centipede and millipede? They look similar. Isn't it? When you see a fowl, you understand? When you see uh, something like a uh, ostrich and other birds, birds look similar, isn't it? Human beings look similar. So when you classify, you bring living things that look similar into one group or one category. That is classification. So classification of living things. Classification of living things involves placing living things into groups that have certain features in common, which distinguish them from other groups. From other groups. You understand? You put them in groups. When you see birds, birds are in one group. Fishes are in one group of classification. Human beings are in one group, isn't it? So when you place them in such groups, then you're doing what we call classification. The system used in classification of living things was introduced by a Swiss scientist known as Carl von Linn. Known as what? Carl von Linn. Known as Carl von Linn. Classification of living things starts with classifying living things into two kingdoms. Is that clear? Into what? Two what? Kingdoms. Two kingdoms. And these kingdoms are what? Plants and what? Animals. That's the two main kingdoms that plant, uh, living things are classified into. Plants and what? Animals. Then, the plants are what we call division. The plants are what we call what? Divisions. Whereas the animals are what we call phylum. Are what we call what? Phylum. Then from there it goes down to other classification which I'm going to illustrate with the next diagram that I'm going to draw. You understand? Classification of living things. Classification of living things involves placing living things into groups. You are placing living things into groups that have certain features in common. You understand? Most of the birds, they have four and they fly. So you place all of them in one group. Fishes normally swim inside water. You understand? There are different kinds of fishes, isn't it? You classify them in one group. So when you are doing such classification, you are classifying living things. And the method used is the one that is introduced by a Swiss scientist known as Carbon or Lane. Now, when you want to classify, you start by classifying living things into two major kingdoms. And those two kingdoms are what? Plants and what? Animals. So I'm going to draw the sketch of this classification method. 
So we have what to call the what? The first one is the what? Kingdom. Then after the kingdom, we have what to call the phylum. The what? Phylum. Which is for what? Animals. Or you have what to call the viewers. The mission, which is for what? Plants. So from kingdom you get to the phylum or the mission. We call it phylum when you are addressing animals or the mission when it's for plant. Then from kingdom what we have, we have what we call class. I mean from phylum we have class. Then from class we have what? We have order. Then from order we have what? We have family. Then from family we have genus. Then from genus we have species. Species. So that is the order of classification of living things. That is the schematic description of the order of classification of living things. First of all, we have what we call the kingdom. After the kingdom, we have other divisions known as phylum for animal or division for plant. Then we have the class, then we have the order, then we have the family, the genus, and the species. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So that is the order of classification of living things. That is the order of classification of living things. That is the order of classification of living things. Is that clear? Now, from the order, which one is the last? Species, isn't it? So we can say that the basic unit of classification of living things is the what? Is the what? Species. The basic unit of classification of living things is the species. And the species has, is that clear? The species the species is the smallest unit of classification. Species is the what? The smallest unit of classification. Containing members which have the largest features in common. Which have the largest features in what? Common. Containing members which have the largest number of features in common. They can interbreed. Animals or plants in the same species can always interbreed. Can always do what? Interbreed. Like when you have a monkey, you know that a monkey is a mama, isn't it? And human being is also a mama, isn't it? Monkey and human beings are mama. Well, can they interbreed? They cannot. A monkey and a ma human being cannot interbreed. You understand? Because human being is classified as Homo sapien, isn't it? Homo sapien. That's the species. The species is the sapien. Is that clear? 
But monkey cannot inter interbreed with us because we are not the same species. Although we are in the same class. Is that clear? The class of monkey is what we call mammalia. And that of human being is also what? Mammalia. You understand? Both monkeys and human beings are mammals, but they cannot interbreed because they are not in the same species. But both of them are in the same, they are in the same kingdom. Why are they in the same kingdom? Because both of them are animals, isn't it? They are in the animal kingdom. They are in the same phylum. They are also in the same class. But they are not the same species. You understand? For them to interbreed, interbreed they must be in the same world species. Is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? So species is the basic unit of what? Classification. Basic unit of classification. Basic unit of classification. Let's take an example. We have human being and we have lion. We have human being and we have what? Lion. Now, the classification, we have number one classification is the world. Kingdom is the number one classification, isn't it? What kingdom is human being? Animal, isn't it? Animalia. And lion is also what? Animalia, that's the kingdom. Now, the second classification, we have to talk about the what? The phylum, isn't it? What phylum is human being? Chordata. And uh, what phylum is uh, lion? Chordata. As animals that have spinal cord, or animals that have uh, bones, animals that have bones, or that type. Okay. Then we talk about the word class. What class is human being? Human being is mammalia. What class is lion? Mammalia. Mammals. You understand? In English, we call it mammals. Now, we talk about the order. What order is human beings? Primates. What order is lion? Carnivora. Now, we talk about family. What family is human beings? Hominidia. Hominidia. What family is lion? Felidia. Felidia. Now, we we'll talk about genus. What genus is human being? Homo. What genus is lion, pentera? Now, lastly, we talk about species. What species are human beings? Sapiens. What species are lions? Leo. You understand? So those are the classification for human beings, starting from kingdom down to species. And similarly for lions, starting from kingdom down to species.
Are we together? So these are the classes, classification procedure. First is kingdom, second is phylum, third is class, fourth order, family, genus, and what? Species. And this is the category that human being falls in using this. You understand? Now, we said that the person that introduced the procedure for naming or classifying living things is the man called Calvin Lane. Called Calvin Lane. And the method is introduced is a method called binomial nomenclature. Binomial what? Nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature is the method introduced by Calvin Lane. Binomial what? Nomenclature. What is the meaning of binomial nomenclature? Binomial nomenclature simply means giving living things two names. Given living things what? Two names. First is the generic name, the genus, followed by the specific name. First is the word generic name, followed by the word specific name. Is that clear? Binomial word, nomenclature. Some people call it botanical name or the names, you understand, the scientific names. So, like, if you want to give human beings names, using the scientific name, you will give them two names. First is the generic name or the genus name, followed by the specific name or the special name. So for human beings, the name of the scientific name for human beings is what? Homo sapiens. Scientific name for human beings is what? Homo sapiens. Because of the fact that we are using what? Binomial what? Nomenclature. We are using two names. You are not going to give name human being sapiens or homo. You will give it two names. So those two names is the generic name and the word specific name. Genus name and word special name. So human being by this uh, explanation is what? Homo sapiens. So what's the name of a lion? The scientific name? Panthera leo. Panthera leo. Panthera leo. That's the name, that's the scientific name for life. And the scientific name for human being is what? Homo sapiens. And it is gotten by the generic name and the word specific name. Is that clear? So that is how you name in binomial nomenclature. Is that clear? Is that clear? Good.